Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at perfect competition in the long run and continue to build on what we've been doing over the last couple of days looking at the perfectly competitive firm. We're going to move from the short run now into the long run and all of this information is in chapter 13 of your book and the pages uh, that I've marked. So our goal to understand how the firm will behave both in the short and long runs and uh, try and derive a industry supply curve and get a sense for how the market will react to the presence of either positive or negative economic profits. And we're going to assume that in a perfectly competitive market that all of our firms have identical products, that there are many, many firms out there that no one firm can control the price, that they're all price takers. Uh, because the goods are exactly identical, we'll assume they're using identical technology, and as a result, they should have identical cost structures. So if we want to talk about um, the, the market supply curve, we need to start by looking back at the individual firms supply curve. And we'll remember that the short run supply curve for an individual firm uh, is what will help determine the optimal output for that firm. So we look at our costs, we look at our average total costs, average variable costs, we'll look at our marginal costs, and we'll see where the marginal revenue curve crosses the marginal cost curve. Where it crosses will determine whether or not we operate uh, in the short run or not. So if we look at this graph, just as a refresher, if the price is $10 at point A, it crosses the average variable cost curve at its minimum. That's our shutdown price. We're willing to operate as long as the price is at least $10. If it's less than 10, we shut down. We can't cover our variable costs um, in that case, in which case shutting down minimizes our loss. If the price is above $10, we'll go ahead and operate, at least in the short run, even though between points A and C, we're operating at an economic loss. And so we can derive our short run individual supply curve as uh, zero, from between zero and ten dollars will produce nothing and then from ten dollars on will produce three bushels on up into however many bushels um, are, are called for given the marginal revenue. And once we've got a handle on the short run behavior of the individual firm, we can then begin to look at the behavior of the market as a whole, at least in the short run, and we can create a short run supply curve. And how we do that is, again, by assuming that every firm has the same cost structure, we can pretty much assume then that every firm, if the, dollar, uh, the price is $10, will produce three bushels each. So if there were 100 firms, then in that case, if the price is $10, then the market itself would have 300 bushels of tomatoes. 100 firms, each producing three bushels, leaves us with 300 total bushels uh, in the market. And then if the price were $18, then we would see 500 bushels uh, of tomatoes because the marginal revenue curve crosses the marginal cost curve at a quantity of five bushels. So 100 firms, five bushels each, we'd see 500 bushels of tomatoes at an $18 price. And so we can take that information and build for ourselves a short run industry supply curve. Then we can identify what the price is for individual firms by looking and seeing where it crosses the industry demand curve. In this case, we've got a market that's at equilibrium in the short run with $18 uh, per bushel as the price and 500 total bushels being produced by the market. Now just because we're at short run equilibrium doesn't mean that that's where the market is going to stay. And in fact, if you remember back to the original curve, we saw that there is going to be economic profit at $18. But to see how this uh, situation plays out in both the market and for the individual firm, we need to uh, draw side by side graphs. And so to look at what happens in the long run, we're going to draw a curve or a graph for the market and we'll draw a separate curve for the individual firm. We'll put them side by side in order to see the interplay. So for the market, we've got a intersection of supply and demand at $18 and 500 bushels. And we've got our individual firm's cost structure on the right. And at $18, we see that we have an area of profit, economic profit, equal to the box A. 
Now, if there's economic profit, then firms outside the industry with free entry and exit will look at that, and some will take advantage because there'll be more economic profit in this market than in the market they're currently in. And so they will begin to exit their original market and enter into this new market, and that will cause the supply curve to shift to the right as there are more suppliers. That shift leads to a movement along the demand curve and a lowering of the price to $16. But even at $16, you can see that there's economic profit to be had in this industry. So in the long run, firms will continue to enter into this industry until the price is driven all the way down to $14, which is our break-even point for the individual firm. Once the market works its way down to $14 per bushel, we find ourselves at long-run market equilibrium. Because in the long-run equilibrium point, uh, there is no longer any incentive for people to enter or exit the market. We also see then that long-run equilibrium leaves companies or firms with um, economic profit of zero or normal profit. So in long-run market equilibrium situations in a perfectly competitive market, firms will earn normal profit or zero. It doesn't mean that they don't have accounting profit, it just means that they can't do any better for themselves than what they're doing right now. We could also model the, uh, the, the industry if there, there was a change in demand. We've looked at a change in supply. We could also look and see what would happen if there were some sort of change in demand in the industry. And in order to do that, we would um, draw both a uh, graph for the firm and then side by side a graph for the industry. And in this case, we might say that uh, demand might increase for some reason. Tastes have changed. People want one, this product more than they did before. There's going to be a shift in demand. That shift in demand creates an increase in price in the short run. That rise in price leads to economic profit. So the firm here, the existing firm, has a, uh, a new profit. And so that will encourage firms from outside the industry to enter back into this market, which will cause the supply to shift to the right. And it'll continue to shift to the right, and firms will continue to enter in until they get back to the original equilibrium price. So in the short run, a change in demand, a shift to the right, or a positive shift in demand, leads to a rise in price in the short run and a rise in quantity in the short run. But in the long run, as firms enter in trying to seek those economic profits, we will see that the individual firm's price and quantity will go back to the original equilibrium. There are more firms. So they're producing more goods, but each individual firm is still producing the same amount they were before at the original price. And so we see that the long run supply curve shows how the quantity supplied will respond to the price once producers have had time to enter and exit the industry. In essence, what we saw was that an increase in demand led to an increase in price in the short run. It led to positive profits and entry into the market by other firms, which leads to an increase in supply, a drop in price, and a return back to zero profit or normal profit. One other thing we see here is that in this example, the long run industry supply curve, the long run supply curve is more elastic than the short run curve. The short run curves are relatively are drawn relatively inelastic, but the long run supply curve remains perfectly elastic. At least in this case, it's perfectly elastic. That in essence, uh, firms will supply as many tomatoes as are demanded at a fourteen dollar price. Essentially, what that means then is that firms will produce as much as people want at that equilibrium price of $14. So however much people demand at $14 is what the, firm, the industry will produce in the long run. And as a result, then, the supply curve is horizontal, which indicates it's perfectly elastic. And while the uh, long run industry supply curve may not always be perfectly elastic, we can say in general that it is more elastic than in the short run, that uh, the long run industry supply curve is more responsive to changes in prices than in the short run, which makes some sense because 
uh, firms are, are limited based on fixed costs in the short run, but in the long run where costs are no longer fixed but fully variable, they have more flexibility to change uh, output than they do in the short run. Higher prices will attract more entry um, in the long run, and that will lead to a greater change in supply than we would have seen in the short run where firms are uh, stuck in their current industry until the short run is expired. So what are some conclusions we can make about perfect competition? One is that the marginal cost is the same uh, for all firms, that all firms, at least in what we call a constant cost industry, which is what you'll see mostly um, in problems, um, in those cases with constant costs, every firm faces the same cost structure and so the marginal cost will be the same for everyone. Uh, we know that firms will earn normal profit in the long run, that if there is profit in the short run, economic profit, positive economic profit, that firms will enter and drive the normal profit uh, drive profits down to normal. If there is an economic loss, then firms will leave. That will bring the price up until it hits normal profit, and there it will stop. And we know that the long run is, is uh, equilibrium is efficient. There is no way to make yourself better off without making somebody else worse off. And that's uh, perfect competition. And so uh, we'll do some practice in class, and uh, we will move on to monopoly in the next couple of days. See you then.